this tutorial, we are going to explore the missing data profiling of time series data using Y data profiling. The data we are going to use is US pollution data. So it's essentially um, a set of measurements of our pollutants across several of the US states. And getting it to work is super straightforward. So you just download the data, it is freely available. And then you start by importing um, your pandas package and reading the data. Then the only thing you need to do to get Y data profiling to work is to obviously install the package, then import it to your Jupyter notebook, and then make sure that you set up the TS mode true and sort by your date. So this activates the time series mode, which you need to get um, a spectacular profiling of your time series data. The most interesting part is to get right on to the profiling itself. So in this latest release, YData has included more specific metrics for the time series analysis and some really cool visualizations. And this offers a different and completely whole experience for us. So right away from our data, we can see that it contains 14 different time series and each has 8,674 recorded values. We can also see that this data set reports on 10 years of data from January 2000 to December 2010. And in average, um, the periods of the sequences are about 11 hours, which means that we have measures being taken every 11 hours. Now we can go to um, each one of our features but we are particularly interested in checking, for instance, one of the metrics. So let's zoom in on the SO2 mean as an example. Okay, right now we immediately, we notice there are some uh, flaky patterns here. So we see that this, there are these jumps that appear to occur between consecutive measurements, which might indicate presence of missing data. So this might be just gaps of missing information that we need to study more closely. So if we are going to investigate these details, we can start by um, the time series itself, which allows us to see better the gaps we've just mentioned, and then move on to the gap analysis where we can get um, real measurements from these somehow random gaps. So we can see that there are overall 25 gaps in this time series, a minimum length of four days and a maximum of 40 or 32 weeks, which means that we seem to have several months missing. Um, and in average, they have about seven weeks, um, a gap of 10, of 10, of 10 weeks. Um, and now note how these random gaps are of two types. We have this thinner. Let me just zoom it a little bit. Okay. We have somewhat these thinner gaps, which might indicate certain sporadic events like errors in the transmission or collection process. Um, and this perhaps can be easily interpolated or even deleted from the data set if you have plenty of data. Um, However, these larger gaps seem more complex and they need to be analyzed in more detail because they probably may reveal um, a pattern that needs to be addressed more thoroughly. So for instance, if we were to investigate these larger gaps, we would in fact uh, discover that they reflect a rather seasonal pattern. So here in my Jupyter notebook, I just printed um, the, the months that I'm missing for each year. And we can see that um, in most years, the data was not collected between months five to eight, which is May to August. And this may occur to a lot of uh, unpredictable reasons or maybe some known business decisions, for instance, relating to cutting costs, related to seasonal variations or others that might affect the, the outcome of our data set. So essentially, data profiling of missing data is super essential for us to get a real understanding of our data. They might happen due to collection or processing reasons, 
and they might happen due to interesting characteristics of our data set. 